Our guest in this segment is a guest set up courtesy of Bill Kearns. Bill, why don't you do the intros? Well, I have uh, actually uh, asked for uh, my... She has multiple hats that she wears. Katie Morgan is uh, one of the staff members, not only of the uh, for the Day Report Center. She works um, for the health department. She um, for the hats for the, just for the health department. She heads up our quick response team, as well as our um, harm reduction program. She's the coordinator for that. So um, she has lots of uh, activities in her life. And she still smiles all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after this long of time, it's been a, a couple of years, I think, with the, the quick, quick response team and working within our harm reduction program. And, and now she heads that up. And you always see a smile on her face. And um, she's, she's courteous. She's, uh, she's incredible. So uh, it gr- gave me great honor to be able to request to have her our f- first guest this morning. Um, and Katie can... Um, tell you all about the programs that she does way better than I could ever. Katie, good morning. Good morning. Come on closer to your mic so we can hear your voice. Good morning. Excellent. So I, I know the reason why Katie smiles at her job, what she does now, because I just checked with her before we went on there, but what she did previously, and she spent, I think, seven years in Child Protective Services. So yes. this compared to that, if, there, if there's a way to get an easier, you know, uh, uh, way of getting through the day <laughs> right. from child protective services because that's going to be a tough job too yes absolutely yeah. absolutely so and since, you're still smiling yes try to <laughs> <laughs> yeah well well good for you uh why did you end up pursuing this job here at the berkeley county health department katie um so through that work that i was doing with child protective services um i don't think it comes as any surprise to anyone that substance use disorder was primarily what we were experiencing and what we were working with and uh, you know, in the time that I was working with families, parents, um, yeah. you know, children, neglect was definitely the, the biggest thing that we saw. And um, neglect as a result of a parent substance use disorder was was the primary um, cause of our involvement all those years. And um, so I had a lot of experience working with folks in um, in this realm. And what I love about what I do now is that, uh, you know, folks get to choose whether they want to work with me or not. No, um, people didn't really have a choice when I showed up and knocked on their door, sure. um, you know, as a child protective services worker. So um, it's really awesome to get to walk that journey and, and see people, um, you know, making choices for positive change for themselves. And if they're not ready, us just being able to take a step back and play a supportive role um, and frequently seeing those folks come back to us when they are ready because they know that that we're there for them so if you're going to take a holistic approach to the child protective services problem you've got to start with what you're doing now right absolutely. harm reduction absolutely. substance abuse and this is the approach that you've decided to take right so uh give me an idea you worked in virginia yes in cps compare and contrast west virginia and virginia's approach to dealing with these issues so you know i think we all also know that a lot of folks who um, are experiencing substance use disorder also end up justice involved and i think that was the hardest thing for me to see in virginia is you know strict timelines placed on folks who um, were caught up in the system as a result of a substance use disorder and and what i know in working with folks struggling for all of these years is that it's not a one size fits all problem and saying you have to do X, Y, and Z in eight months or even 12 months is not realistic. So, you know, that's been um, something that I've definitely uh, noticed and, and taken with me as I've come over here to work in Berkeley County is, is recognizing that what someone's able to achieve in three months is not realistic for someone else to achieve in the same time frame. Um, so really treating folks as individuals and tailoring their needs and their plans to fit those needs so it's it's been really great to kind of compare and contrast and see like what was working versus what wasn't working and how can i help align the needs of our participants to also meet the needs of you know the court system also you know child protective services if they are involved um, you know, we're really, really fortunate that we have a really great working relationship with Eastern Regional Jail and a lot of the attorneys in our area here so that we are able to kind of 
bounce things off of them and you know they might be thinking hey i want this person to do this but we're able to advocate for those folks and say you know that's not super realistic for this person right now so what about this mm -hmm. um so having those amazing working relationships and i i definitely credit that a lot to our amazing um case manager that we have at the resource center which is um where one of my offices is <laughs> um, one of many. Yes, so um, you know it's it's been really really amazing to grow those relationships and see it from both ends of the spectrum. Uh, talk to me about the day report center and how that figures into your day. Um, so I am under the community corrections umbrella. So Tim Saya, who is the director of community corrections, is also um, my one of my bosses in addition to Bill. So um, Tim heads up the day report center. He heads up the recovery resource center, which is what I supervise on a day to day basis and then also home confinement. So um, it's kind of a threefold system and um, all are alternatives to incarceration. Um, the beautiful thing about the resource center is while we do work with a lot of folks who are justice involved, um, it's not a requirement. Anybody can walk in off the street and ask for help. We frequently have family members call who um, are looking for help and support um, through loving someone who is struggling. And, um, you know, sometimes folks walk in the door and don't even have insurance. So we're really, really blessed that we have a great um, connection at DHHR who is able to help us really quickly get that done so that that's not a barrier to someone entering treatment. Matt Miller. I'm just listening and wondering how you can keep everything straight with all the various agencies that you work with, the individuals that you work with, uh, and, and then handling each case on that individual basis. What is the, the biggest challenge, you would say, in your work? Uh, I would say the biggest challenge is, um, you know, obviously we develop rapport and we develop relationships with our participants, and it is hard when we lose a participant. Mm. Um, the reality is that folks are dying in our community every day to substance use disorder, and that is probably the biggest barrier we face is, you know, were we able to intervene in time? Um, was that person able to get the help that they needed? And so kind of finding that balance, you know, it wears on all of us, all of the staff, all of, all of us in the community feel that loss, and, you know, it's, it's, there's times whenever staff, and including myself, feel like, did I do enough? You know, could, is there something else I could have done? Um, so trying to keep that morale up and that confidence up in us and, and the mission that we're trying to achieve mm -hmm. is, is sometimes challenging. So how do you kind of find the strength to be able to fight through those, kind, those times? Uh, I think the successes are definitely what keep mm -hmm. us going. Um, you know, you don't have to look far to see folks who were involved in our very programs who are now working alongside us for the county, which is absolutely incredible. Um, I give a ton of credit to Berkeley County um, for taking chances on folks who've gone through our programs, whether it's, um, you know, day report, adult drug court, harm reduction. Um, it's been really, really incredible um, to see these things come full circle and then get to work alongside these very folks we were serving previously so can you kind of walk us through from from beginning to end if you will of of how the process works from let's say you mention a family member may reach out and call and say hey i've got a son a daughter a, a father a mother whatever the relationship may be that is dealing with this substance abuse how can i help them H how does it start and then where does it move sure so um, whether it is someone walking in the door or someone calling us on the phone, um, they're going to be met with a staff member at the Resource Center. A number of our staff are in recovery themselves, uh, which brings an amazing perspective to, to folks who are struggling to understand the mindset of a loved one who is struggling. And uh, we also have um, a coordinator on our team who unfortunately did lose her son to uh, substance use disorder herself. So. Uh, the lived experience is incredible and invaluable at our office, and uh, they're going to get connected with somebody who, whether, like I said, whether they call or they come in and sit down in the office and, and talk to someone, whoever's there is going to just be a listening ear, kind of um, take an opportunity to do some motivational interviewing, kind of see where that person's at, what they're struggling with, what the needs are and then uh, lay out some options for them. You know, here are some things that we can offer you to support you, whether it's 
um, something as simple as peer coaching or, you know, hey, are you open to us calling and checking on you once a week um, to, you know, referring to support groups, referring to counselors um, on a professional level who can help them out. Um, we also have a family support meeting that meets at our office on Wednesday evenings at 530. So frequently, whenever we have loved ones who are struggling, um, we encourage them to come. And that's led by two of our peer coaches who are actually on the quick response team as well, Lindsay and Kate. They are incredible, um, yeah. just very warm, loving um, individuals who just really approach it with kindness and empathy they're both very soft-spoken and um, really great listeners so they take the time to kind of sit down and, and get to know folks and get to know what they're struggling with and um, help them walk through from the perspective of you know I struggled with this and I can assure you that your loved one is feeling X Y and Z um, I can assure you that you know as a parent my parents struggled with X Y and Z you know giving those lived experience examples um, to help people not feel alone and and to know that there's others who truly do understand where they're coming from so a lot of that seems to be geared towards as i mentioned a family member mm -hmm. or someone reaching out right. as far as someone who is in an addiction who is reaching that point in that addiction they recognize it and and they need help does it have to come through the court system before it gets to you or can that person reach out on their own and say i need help um, it can come from the court system or absolutely the individual can reach out and advocate for themselves. And we frequently do um, encounter folks who just walk in the door, heard about us from someone. I think word of mouth is probably the um, the way that information about us spreads the quickest. So, um, you know, frequently folks will say, hey, um, so-and-so told me that you guys helped them when they were struggling and, you know, they walk in the door. And then from there, it's really individualized. It's meeting that person where they're at because um, step one is always going to be, um, you know, if they're wanting any form of treatment, whether it's inpatient, outpatient, um, you know, things cost money. And we don't want folks to be burdened by astronomical insurance bills. So frequently, if they are not insured, um, that's one of the first steps we're taking with that individual is helping them get insured so that they can then um, make choices that will support where they're at in their lives and their journey and um, is going to work for them. You know, if they are employed, if they have children, you know, we obviously don't want to do anything that's going to further create barriers for them. So if going away to treatment is not realistic for them because they're going to lose their job and therefore, you know, lose their source of income, their housing, you know, things can snowball quickly from there. Um, you know, outpatient is probably something that's more feasible for them. So, again, just kind of meeting folks where they're at, um, getting to know them and understand their individual needs, and then helping walk that journey with them as they make those decisions for themselves for what's best for them. Before I let Bill jump in, I just have a question as far as I hear the term uh, all the time, the quick response team. Yes. What does that mean? Um, so the quick response team is a team that is comprised of a case manager and two peer coaches, and they are responding within 24 to 48 hours to overdoses here in Berkeley County and the city of Martinsburg. So we get those EMS reports um, from the city and from the county, and Essentially, it's anytime there's a suspected overdose, um, but those are coming over to us. And within 24 to 48 hours, our team is literally going out and knocking on folks' doors and um, introducing themselves and saying, you know, hey, this is what we're here for. We're here to support you. Um, you know, if, if folks want to go to treatment, they can put them in the car right then and there and take them to the hospital and start that process for detox. If uh, they're not open to that, which, you know, folks frequently aren't quite ready for that, um, it's again, meeting those folks where they're at. Uh, can we help you with a referral to outpatient? Can we help you with some support meetings? Uh, are we, is it okay if we call you once a month and check in on you? Is it okay if we call you once a week? Sometimes folks say, can you call me twice a week? You know, it's really individualized to fit those needs. But those, those uh, ladies are incredible and they, again, are just incredibly empathetic and kind and um, essentially, it's just boots on the ground, knocking on doors, and um, you know anybody who's willing to talk. And frequently, they're encountering family members as well in those interactions. All right, Bill, I, I got to throw one now at you from the health department <laughs> side. With, with all of this that we're talking about, 
are we leading as far as Berkeley County and the Eastern Panhandle in these types of, of services? Uh, are, are these types of opportunities for those across the state who are dealing with these issues similar, or uh, uh, is it much harder, say, if you're somewhere else in West Virginia? I, I think it's, uh, depending on what part of the state you're in, it's absolutely harder. We um, There are not quick response teams in every county. Mm -hmm. We are blessed to have one in Berkeley County, in Morgan. Um, there are not harm reduction programs in every county. Um, they are grants that we apply for, um, and it's money well spent. But it's not a given that you have these in each and every county. The um, So I think as we continue to move along, our programs change. Um, certainly when we started a harm reduction program back in the very beginning stages, it is not. It is not the same program that we're offering today. We um, we have seen lots of um, success stories come out of our programs. Many people think that a harm reduction program is just giving out um, syringes uh, to have clean syringes, so they're not reusing. Certainly, that's part of it, and and we're proud to to say that we have a ninety some percentile return rate on syringes. They're not ending up on the streets. Many of our our clients actually go out and pick them up from other that they see uh, and bring in. So the, the, the harm reduction program and the quick response team is a robust program that's that's run by the health department, and it's, and it's an exceptional program. We see lots of success stories like um, Katie was mentioning, and uh, we were both at the Friends of the Recovery um, um, uh, event the other night, and it was absolutely mind-blowing hearing the presenters um, talk about their lives and how it started in their lives or their addiction and some of them that had, had um, actually um, got into a program got clean got a college degree and are working that that is why we do what we do that is um, that's the whole purpose of this it's and, and and but we don't know until that person takes that first step to walk through the doors whether it's at the resource center at the day report center the health department to say I need help and that they reach out for that. That's why we do what we do each and every day, and, it, and it's an incredible program. Bill Kearns co-hosting along with Matt Miller. Katie Morgan is our guest, the Recovery Services Coordinator in Berkeley County. Been on the job two years now, I think you said, Katie. two years, yes. <laughs> right. There's an article on the Metro News website today about the backlog in Eastern Panhandle Courts for Child Protective Services. I think the backlog is 400 cases. Mm -hmm. Talked about the vacancy rate of uh, employees in the department where a uh, caseworker should have 30 cases, they have 125 they're trying to take care of. Katie, is, is there a way out of this if we don't have more people who want to work in this field? No. Um, I mean, truly, the short answer is no. Um, and I know that that's way above my pay grade. Uh, but, you know, taking a look at this through the lens that I do each and every day, you've got to have folks who are passionate um, who see people as human beings and understand um, the dynamics and the complexities of substance use disorder. This isn't a, like I said, one size fits all. This isn't a, you know, this is the program everybody has to follow. It What works for one person isn't going to work for another. And until we start recognizing that and meeting those individuals' needs, and, you know, of course, speaking from um, my past with Child Protective Services, it is really hard to provide quality care to each and every family, each and every child you're encountering when your caseload is 125 plus. I mean, that's just not humanly possible. And so there have to be more folks who are willing to do this work and willing to do it well. Depending on the location, according to the article, a typical CPS worker in West Virginia makes somewhere between thirty and $50,000. They have scheduled raises that they've uh, worked in. In the article, it said uh, because of some of the bills that have been passed of anywhere from 10 to 15%, depending on where you fall in the qualifications and, and such. But if you're going to get more people into this field, I can't think of too many people who graduate from college and want to go to work someplace at 30 something thousand a year when you can go to Sheets and make that without dealing with all the stress of Child Protective Services that uh, you encounter every single day. Absolutely. Yes, that is, um, you know, something that I was very blessed in Virginia is the pay scale is quite different. Um, but I, speaking from my own experience, I can't even imagine 
um, you know, 40 hours was laughable. I don't think I ever worked 40 hours mm -hmm. in all those years. Um, you know, the the weeks typically went, leaned way more towards 80 hours a week. Um, wow. So to be doing that amount of work, um, you think about the time that it takes folks away from their own families, their own mm -hmm. um, personal lives, hobbies, um, even just things such as self-care of getting to and from the gym, you know, on a day, if that's, you know, something or, or having time to meal prep so that you're not eating fast food constantly. You don't even really have much of any time to do that in that time frame. So to be doing that for that little of pay is, is asking a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And I, from a perspective, um, being that you've been in, in child protective services and now on the recovery side as well, uh, are there more females in this line of work than males that's from what you've seen yes. and, and do you have a theory as to why that is i think there's honestly just more females for whatever reason in the social work field in general so i think that more females typically lean towards that line of work and again i don't i don't know what the scientific backing is but i can say that for the majority of my career i've always had way more female co-workers than male if uh, and I know you said this is above your pay grade, but uh, the legislature right now is in interim session in January. They'll go back in for a full session. If you had an audience with uh, an elected official or all of them and they said, Katie, what can we do to help recovery and child protective services in West Virginia? You're the boots on the ground person. What would you tell them? You know, we need to pour into these programs. I mean, this what we're doing here in Berkeley County is evidence that putting the money, the support. We've been incredibly blessed here that we have um, a county commission that backs this effort, that backs these um, programs. And without that support um, and the buy-in from them, we would not be successful. Um, so I, I know that uh, Justice Hutchison was our uh, keynote speaker on Saturday, and he kind of touched on this. He's from Raleigh County. And, you know, touching on the perception from the rest of the state is that, well, Berkeley County has all this money. I think it's so much more mm -hmm. than that here in Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. Like, we have the people, the community who cares enough to advocate for these programs, cares enough to put their resources into these programs. And I think that's what makes us successful more than anything. And that's what's needed throughout the state. And I think providing consistent funds to your to your health departments to establish these programs without having to rely upon grants. Um, as Katie mentioned, we're, we're blessed that we have a county commission that supports this program. It has since its inception, as well as the city of Martinsburg. Um, without them and their, uh, we have uh, the funds that we get from the grant are restricted um, as far as what we can use it for and what we can't. And we're blessed that the, the city of Martinsburg has a buy-in on this program. They have a lot to gain, um, and they support us well in this program and providing those resources that we don't have other places. So uh, we would much rather be able to do this each and every year without having to worry about do we have grant dollars to keep the program going. Yeah, well stated, Bill. Katie, uh, great stuff. Wonderful to have you on the program and hopefully get you back. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Katie Morgan, Recovery Services Coordinator, wearer of many hats in Berkeley County. <laughs> and Bill, thanks for setting that up for us. Sure.